this morning, uh, early afternoon. Uh, I am Gary Osman. I'm the presenter today. I'm the field engineer here at Swage Lock Pittsburgh Tri-State Area. And today's webinar topic is going to be quick connect uh, type fittings. So we have a couple different uh, series of quick connects that we can present and just function and performance data and stuff like that in general, best practices that we'll run through. So thanks again for joining. Uh, and here we go. So as I mentioned briefly, just a little bit more of an intro, uh, I am part of the Swage Lock field engineering team. What that is, is a global network of field engineers throughout the various Swage Lock sales and service centers. So there's over 140 of them currently throughout the globe. And each one typically specializes in a different area based on geographic location and you know customer market base that falls within there. So it's a very good network of knowledge really that we share daily with each other to help ultimately serve our customer base. Uh, field engineers really specialize in services and advisory services at customers' facilities. And even with you know the pandemic last year in 2020, we did over 100 evaluations on site at customer locations. Uh, and just one cool thing to note on that that we utilize technology wise is uh, Swage Lock really got into the Realware headset, which is like a VR headset application. So we have the ability to have one field engineer on site wearing pretty much a set of goggles that is live streaming whatever he's viewing on site at the customer location. And he can have, you know, numerous field engineers or other associates in his ear live kind of communicating with him. So we, we conducted uh, various on-site evaluations in that manner this last year to help deal with, you know, some of the site access and limitations that were given to us. So that's a cool new avenue that we went down that can still be utilized by us here locally. If anybody had interest doing something like that, uh, you know, have people from Houston, Texas or California pretty much live with us on an evaluation. So that's that's kind of a cool thing to take note of. But really, our our mission there is to just utilize each other. Uh, network across across the globe to ultimately bring the best solutions, knowledge, and advice to you guys, customers on site, and make sure that you know your processes are safe and working as efficiently as possible. So this is just a map that is changing pretty much every every year. Here we're getting new additions to the team, but that just gives you an idea or a, for the scope of where some of these field engineers reside throughout the globe. Okay, so today, here's a quick overview and agenda of what we'll be hitting on here for Quick Connects. You can see there, we'll, we'll just start out, you know, as basic as it gets, what are Quick Connects and different industries and applications, you'll see them, um, various uh, factors and considerations. When you think of Quick Connects, we'll go through the Swage Lock offerings, and then on the back end, we'll hit on some best usage, best practices, stuff like that, and one other uh, kind of derivative fitting that I think is related to Quick Connects. Just briefly at the end, there are Ultra Tour fittings. We'll we'll do a slide or two on those just to wrap up, and then we'll have our Q and A. So any questions? So along those lines, just a little housekeeping. We'll try to keep our microphones muted through the slideshow here. Utilize the chat function for anything that pops into your head, question wise. If you have any concerns, anything that you want to talk about on the back end, and then during the Q and A, you know you can again use that chat function for just any questions, concerns, or comments you have. Uh, and you can also feel free to unmute at that point and we can have a quick chat about anything you want to discuss or anything you want to delve deeper into. We could actually take offline too afterwards. So what are quick connects? As simply as it gets, they are a mechanical device that quickly join and separate fluid system components without the use of tools. So I'm sure most of you are pretty familiar with them, probably familiar with ours. Uh, most oh, the images in here will all be ours, but you see there that bottom left cutaway kind of gives you an idea of the components involved uh, of a coupled assembly. So on the left side there, you see the stem coupled with on the right side, a body. Both of these have swage lock and connections on the end there. Ours use a push pull operation, which is pretty typical with most quick connects. They don't require any twisting or turning or wrenching to couple. And of course, there's a wide variety of offerings, not only different series, but materials and elastomers that can help accommodate different range of temperatures and pressures for your applications. Here are just some common industries that we've seen in the past where there's a high concentration of quick connects, both industries and applications. It, they could pretty much be used anywhere, but those are just, you know, historically industries that 
like I said, Swades all across the globe has seen high concentration use of quick connects. Applications are very much what you think they are, anything that is not a permanent solution. So hoses are probably the number one thing that you see quick connects attached to them for the most part, because by in their nature, they're not permanent hoses. They're meant to be moved around and connect to various different points. So having a quick connect is very beneficial for a hose connection. Along those lines, anything portable, portable equipment, test stands and instrumentation, quick connects are heavily involved in sampling systems such as swage locks. You know, anytime you're putting a sample collection vessel into process or, you know, off a tap or something, you know, you're putting it in and taking it out to remove your media uh, to test it. So quick connects are very beneficial in that type of sampling system due to the just repeatability and knowing that you'll need to do that daily or hourly or whatever your sampling frequency is. So those are just some general fluid transfer lines is a big one too. Uh, for quick connects, you know that those need to be remade quite a bit. And we have a series of quick connects that are actually kind of devoted for that type of application. So some features and variables to consider. Here's just a generic cutaway of a quick connect coupling. In this case, this is a single ended shutoff, which resides in the body on the right side. You'll see the valve utilizing an O-ring seal uh, shown there in aqua or green, whatever color that is. Um, lock, or that's actually the locking mechanism there as well, kind of colored, color coded in the same thing. So those are typically a couple different options there. We'll hit on that in the following slides and uh, some sleeves there that actually cover the coupling of the quick connect. That's pretty generic, but we'll get into a little more detail following this. But yeah, the stem's inserted, connections made, O-ring seals the stem and body to prevent leakage when coupled. And then, like I said, a, a various types of locking mechanisms keep those coupled safely uh, after they've been engaged. And the sleeves do help protect that, you know, mating surfaces during coupling. So some variables to consider. So these are things you want to start to think about before you're heading down, which, which, which connect is going to be best for your application. Flow direction is pretty important and sometimes gets overlooked. Based on the series and style of quick connect you're going to use, they will either be unidirectional flow or bidirectional flow. Uh, we offer both, but you do want to be careful if you are selecting a unidirectional flow quick connect that you do have your flow set up in the correct direction. Typically, body to stem is that if it is a unidirectional flow, because typically the body valve, the body side. Is where the valve resides so you want to make sure that you are flowing in the proper direction if you do have the bi-directional no worries there you could set it up however you need um, and that gets into the type of assembly so we offer and typically there's a lot of these are offered throughout the any manufacturer you can have full flow quick connects which have no valving no restriction within them there's nothing no shut off on either end uh sesso which is a single-ended shut off or deso double-ended shut off so Single ended has a valve in one end of the quick connect coupling, typically the body. Deso is going to have that shutoff option in both sides. So when uncoupled, it will isolate and contain whatever is upstream of that quick connect. Two kind of data points that you want to look at that could be critical for your application, and they're kind of tied and kind of similar spillage and air inclusion. So spillage is going to be the amount of trapped system fluid or media that is from your typically your shutoff valve or if you don't have one the closest upstream shutoff that volume that will escape when uncoupled so once you know if we could think about it in the deso we're going to have shutoffs in both the body and the stem there's still going to be an amount of volume trapped within the body and stem that will escape when you uncouple and the air inclusion is the same just kind of reverse so it's the amount of air that is trapped within the quick connects when you go to couple them so they're very similar in length and the, the numbers to tend to be similar on those two. And if you see that cutaway, that kind of gives you a little idea of the blue area is gonna be the amount of air inclusion when coupled. So just something to consider if you can't have air injected into your system and or you're working with hazardous corrosive media and you do not want any spillage on operators or the environment, you wanna keep those numbers as low as possible. Temperature and pressure ratings, uh, obviously that goes into most fluid system selection. You want to be cognizant of both of those. We have options for them, but an important point to note on Quick Connect specifically is there's a you know a typical max pressure rating for when they are coupled, and that's you know high typically in our case 3,000, 6,000 psi. But the uncoupled rating is drastically different than that. So a Quick Connect can handle much less of a pressure rating when not 
when the stem and body are not engaged, when they are uncoupled. And they are documented pressure ratings for that scenario. So you want to pay attention to that. It cannot withstand the full coupled rating when uncoupled. Flow capacity is important, and that ties into a lot of the type of assembly, full flow, sesso deso. Uh, there will be orifice restrictions if you have that valving in there, so you want to pay, pay mind to that. Uh, and then the type of locking mechanism that will keep those engaged uh, once assembled. Ours all use either a locking ball or dog. There are some other out there, threaded, quarter turn, and cam lock. We, don't, we won't hit on those too much, but just be aware that there are different engagement methods out there for different manufacturers' quick connects. So we have a little video here. This is just going to kick off kind of the swage lock offerings. It's under two minutes. Uh, and then we'll get into each one of these series, give you a little data and things to consider on it, and then some stuff on the back end here. But we'll just play this minute, this video for two minutes and uh, pick it up from there. If anybody, if there's any audio issues or something, just send me a message or something. We'll take care of it. But it was working this morning. One question that comes up quite regularly is what kind of quick connects does Swage Lock have to offer? In fact, Swage Lock offers a wide variety of quick connects starting with our miniature or QM series that features end connections of 1 16th and 1 8th inch and quick fingertip control. Swage Lock's QC series is our instrumentation quick connect that has very easy disconnect and a very positive push to connect and features a double end shutoff stem in red and a single end shutoff stem. Swage Lock's QF series is our full flow quick connect that features compact design and no restriction of flow. For more critical applications, Swayzok offers the QTM series. The QTM has no O-rings. All sealing is done on PTFE seals inside the Quick Connect. The positive flush valve design reduces air inclusion and the potential of spillage. Since most Quick Disconnects also attach to hoses, Swayzok also offers a full variety of hoses from our all metal hose to our PFA core hose, to our PTFE core hose, and even our rubber hose, from sizes two inch all the way down to one eighth inch. For more information on the features and benefits of Swagezox Quick Connect Series and Swagezox Hose Series, please contact your Swagezox Sales and Service Center. All right, so that kind of kicked off what we have to offer. As you saw, there's four different main series that we have. Uh, our QCs, which kind of our general purpose, we consider those, I think, uh, for the most part. QM is kind of a miniature version of those. Um, our QFs are our full flow version. And then our QTMs, which are our Teflon sealed. So we'll have a slide on each of these to kind of talk about some of the differences and when you may use some of these versus the others. Start with our QC, which, it, you know, are labeled the instrumentation. I kind of call them our general purpose. But uh, they are a lightweight compact design just by nature. Uh, they do only require one O-ring seal uh, to make a leak tight connection. They utilize uh, a locking dog there mechanism to keep the two stem and body engaged and have an, a heavy duty shield there, sleeve shield to protect the mating surfaces when coupled. These are unidirectional flow, so they are going to want to flow from body to stem, so you have to pay attention of that. Um, and they have all the valve offerings, so you can get them with single-ended shutoff, double-ended, or a full flow option is available within these. Uh, they have wide, you know, various options. Any option that you would have in a quick connect are on these lines, so you can get them various materials and connection sizes. We have eighth, eighth uh, half inch on these. They're rated 3,000 psi up to 500 f. Um, but yeah, different materials and connection sizes. A keyed option is very. Uh, nice safety feature and important for a lot of customers, and we'll, we'll talk a little more about that uh, after, in a few slides here, but it is an option uh, for the QC series that really help with safety. So that's the general purpose line. And kind of a similar design and concept off of the QC is going to be our QM. So this is just a miniature version of the QC for the most part, and they're typically in the size ranges of about a 16th inch to 8th inch is typical. Uh, they do have a higher pressure rating, 4,000 PSI, and the same 500 uh, Fahrenheit rating. Uh, they're lighter weight, they're smaller, and due to the nature of the size, they're usually coupled and uncoupled with fingertip operation. They have much smaller internal dead space and volume, so that really drives down the spillage and air inclusion numbers, which can be very important. They are just like the QC's one direction flow from body to stem. 
and they do have a locking ball mechanism instead of that locking dog, which you could see kind of right here, the locking balls that depress to, you know, they expand when the stem is inserted and then depress to keep them locked in. That's kind of how that functions. And you see these typically utilized anywhere that you have, you know, very small diameter tubing, 16th inch, eighth inch. These would be a great option for those. So, you know, sampling systems, they, things to analyzers, control panels, stuff like that. Uh, these would be utilized a lot more, I would say, than uh, any other series of quick connects. Uh, the next one in our offering would be our QF series, which is our full flow quick connects. So these are nice. They, de they do not have any shutoff valves in either ends. They are full flow. There's no orifice restriction. So fluid transfer lines and drains and vents are a good option for this. That makes them, without the valving and whatnot, they are bi-directional flow. So you can flow in either direction. And a nice maintenance option of these is the O-ring's easily accessible. You can, you can replace it without disassembling any of the body components. It uses a similar locking ball mechanism as the previous one we just saw, the QM. So the, Q, the QF uses a similar locking mechanism. And like I said, anywhere that you, don't, you want no restriction of your media. So a, a vent or a drain or anything like that where you want full flow, you need the media to transfer as quickly and as safely as possible these would be a good quick connect option for you. And then the last one we'll hit on here out of the Sway Jog offerings is the QTM. And this is a little bit of a unique one. You can see it's a beefier, hunkier design to it. It does not use any O-ring seals. It, uh, it actually has PTFE uh, sealing surfaces opposed to O-rings. It has, what kind of what makes it unique is it does also have a flush valve design in it. So what that does is really minimize that dead space, low internal volume. So the spillage and inclusion numbers are very low, actually, as opposed to what you may think when you see something uh, such a bigger size to it. The top right image there, it's a little small and hard to see, but those are those recessed PTFE seals. They're kind of hidden out of the flow path and out of the connection path of the stem and the body, which is great. It really helps, you know, the longevity and the service of these quick connects from hides it from contamination and also protects it during the coupling and uncoupling process keeps those seals safe um, and free from damage from the most part these are also bi-directional same as the qf you could flow in either direction and as i said there's no o-rings the, anything these are typically used in harsh corrosive environments any media that is going to be uh, compatible with 316 stainless steel and teflon these are great for these will work great there's no you know, Viton or any O-rings or any media like that in there. So these are usually used in the harshest environments, I would say. It has a locking dog mechanism, similar to the QC instrumentation line and has some good options on it. It does have a keyed option, same as the QC. And it actually has a nice safety release option, which I'll have a picture of that a little later. It's an additional button that's required to hit before you could uncouple. It's an additional safety mechanism. But these are rated up to, you know, 4,500 PSI, quarter to one inch size. There's a lot of options on these as well. So safe and proper usage of quick connects in general. Uh, these are just some things to note when you're designing these into an application or using them. These should be that quick connects should always be installed downstream of a primary shutoff. So while you may have SESO or DESO connections that have shutoff valving within them, you should typically consider that to be a secondary shutoff device. Um, just due to the nature and the design of them, they're not as reliable as I would say a ball valve or a needle valve or something along those lines. Uh, they are tend to leakage and failure prematurely as opposed to a ball valve. So just the best safety consideration would be think of it as a secondary device and install it downstream from your primary shutoff. Having a DESO setup is probably the safest you can have. So if you think about it, uh, if you only had a SESO, your, your shutoff valves in the body side of a quick connect, when you do uncouple those, that stem has no isolation on it. So anything upstream, I mean, it could be a 10 foot hose of pressurized gas or liquid that is now uncontained atmosphere. If that is a hose, that thing's gonna be very prone to whipping and you know, re releasing to the atmosphere. So you do wanna, if you don't have that double-ended shutoff, you know, some sort of hose tie down or whip and safety precautions to the operator during the uncoupling process would be needed. If you did design in the DESO system and you could have that into your application with no problem, that would prevent that as well. Um, the safety device, the QTM that I mentioned before with the safety release button, you can kind of see that uh, thumb cut out there on the left side of the left picture. That is an option on the QTM is just to help from accidental uncoupling. 
So some various, the QTMs have it and other, other uh, Styles Quick Connects offer something like that as well. Rotation, so you do not want to rotate Quick Connects. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, to couple them, they just require push-pull, just completely you know, line, lined up push-pull connection, no rotations needed to connect. And once connected, they should not be rotated either. Rotation would just cause premature wear of the ceiling surfaces, so some people do kind of think that, hey, they can be used as a pivot or, uh, you know, a rotation point in your system. That is not true with Quick Connects. They should be, in, you know, coupled and remain static for the most part there when, when connected. And then one of the last options, which some of our Quick Connects offer, are the key uh, option, which all, what that is, is it's a color-coded system. And uh, we probably have eight or ten different options for those that the color-coded stem Blue is only meant to, it can only connect with the color coded body, blue in that case. So if you had, you know, a distribution system or a manifold system of various gases all being plugged into this sim, you know, same proximity connection points, and you wanted to eliminate any operator error or accidental intermixing of medias, you could key out every single media system that you have there to prevent that. So only the blue hydrogen could be connected with the blue hydrogen body and vice, you know, nitrogen to nitrogen and stuff like that. So that's a really good option if you did have that application with a lot of different medias in a close proximity. And some best practices and options as well with Quick Connects. Filters, filters are always a good idea, especially with you know some of these small orifice areas in the Quick Connect. Always have upstream filtration. It's just going to maximize the life of your Quick Connects and the operation. Stem and body protectors, you can see an image of a couple of those there to the right. Those are a great idea all the time really they have you know they have a nice lanyard on them and can be connected and what those are designed to be is when your body and stem is uncoupled you could simply put on couple on a stem or body protector to prevent from dirt contamination operators accidentally bumping into them and damaging your stems or whatever um, the typical ones just as a note are meant to be non-pressure containing but we do have a few options that are pressure containing if that was needed for your application as well just the uncoupling process is another thing to keep in mind. Keep them perfectly aligned. Do not have them, you know, off a, at, at an angle or any degree of rotation when you're putting them in and coupling them. It'll just maximize the life of them. Keep in mind of what your Quick Connect is connected to. So on the other end of your Quick Connect, you can see in that image, uh, we have a pretty drastic hose making a 90 on the right end of that Quick Connect stem. You want to prevent side load on a Quick Connect when coupled and during the uncoupling and coupling process. That's just going to uh, really prevent the longevity of your quick connects if you have that side load. So properly support that, in that case, a hose or whatever else would be on the other end of your system. So it makes it easier on the quick connects during that process. And, you know, quick connects utilize for the most part O-rings to make seals. So you want to have proper maintenance of them as with any fluid power system component that has O-rings. Periodically check them, main, you know, inspect them. Pull them out and put lubrication on them or, or have a PM schedule for them would be the best uh, case scenario. Here's just a couple images of quick connects throughout other swage lock applications and stuff that we've delivered in the past. On the left there is our grab sample system, and we talked a little bit about that before. All swage lock grab sample panels and cylinders utilize quick connects due to the nature of the cylinder needing to be connected and disconnected frequently. So we utilize the QC series typically on our grab sampling systems. In the center there is just a couple different hose and bent tubing assemblies that we've offered and sold in the past that utilize quick connects for frequent remakeability. And on the right, just a, that's actually a portable gas control panel for a welding system. It uses quick connects due to the na portable nature and uh, the ability to change between different flow ranges. We have two different flow meters there, you see. So you plug into whichever flow rate you need for that specific welding setup. So there's just some applications throughout the swage lock world where quick connects are utilized quick, quite a bit. And like I mentioned earlier, so this switching off quick connects, but a related fitting that, you know, to me, it's very related. A lot of people may not be aware of that these are even out there. Ultra tour fittings. Uh, they're different than quick connects, but I'll explain the similarities. These would be used, you want to think at very low pressures and or vacuum applications. So if you did have something along those lines, Ultra tour fittings could be a good solution for you. Typically, they connect, you know, they can connect glass, metal, or plastic tubing. And you can see on the right there the four different components that are utilized 
in a ultra tour fitting to make a seal it is an o-ring seal on the od of whatever tubing you are using and because of the design of it it can compensate for some differences and or variances in the od of the tubing some of the slim you know why i think it's similar knurled nut assembly so you can it's a finger tight assembly no tooling required similar to a quick connect uh it has that o-ring seal which as I said, it can compensate for variation. So an example, up to a 32nd of an inch. So an example is if you did have a quarter inch fitting, you could use that on quarter inch OD tubing or six millimeter tubing. So it's nice, it's, it's versatile, it's flexible. Um, similar to a quick connect, the reusability, it doesn't damage or deform or anything to the tubing itself. So it can be repeatabil repeatability is there similar to a quick connect. And a lot of variation in the fittings. We have T's, elbows, fittings, male connectors. So there's a lot of flexibility on those as well. So that's more of an awareness thing. Just ultra tour fittings are out there. If you're working with vacuum or very low pressure, this could be a good option for you as well. And it's kind of an offshoot of a quick connect. So that is everything I had prepared today for the quick connects. Uh, if anybody at this point has anything that Maybe I didn't hit on enough or just sparked your mind of, hey, I, I want to know a little bit more about it. Feel free to unmute now or if you want to pop something into the chat function, we can address it at this time. But that's everything that we had prepared for the webinar today. And I thank, thank everyone for joining and uh, hopefully you pulled something out of here that will help you moving on day to day with your Quick Connect applications. We'll just hang on a minute here. I think, yeah, timing's pretty right on. We got about two, a minute or two here before the half hour's up. So if anybody else had anything that they want to type or, and, and afterwards there's my contact info and you know, you guys know all your account managers and stuff. If any, if you want any additional information or want to discuss anything further after this, by all means, shoot us a message and would gladly do so. And uh, like I said, the recording of this should be available to everybody afterwards. Give us a little bit of time to get it downloaded and you know posted somewhere or whatever but you'll have access to that eventually and if there's no other questions i guess at this point or no one has anything else to chime in on um one other thing to bring up is this is a series of webinars we're trying to put together here uh, at swagelock pittsburgh to our customer wide customer base usually is what we're offering them to so just put on your calendars now, make note. Uh, right now we have June 16th scheduled to do our tube fitting advantage webinar. Um, that'll be led by Andy Wright here at Swagelock Pittsburgh. So this will, this will be the next in the line of webinars. We're typically shooting for one a month. So if you wanna make note and put on your calendar, we'll be sending out in invites here soon, email blast or whatever to sign up and uh, hopefully attend that one as well. So that being said, 1030, we uh, hit it right on the head here. So I thank you all for attending. I appreciate it. If you want to send an email with additional follow-up or a message, great. Uh, any feedback would be appreciated as well. Uh, but I'll let everyone go. I hope you uh, enjoyed the half hour here today. And hopefully we'll catch you at June 16th for our next in the series of webinars. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.